But I know underneath that, that facade of innocence, there's a big, fat, daddy D in his pants. I notice, however, that his gaze frequently flicks about- I'm never saying daddy again in this playthrough. That's the last time. Hi guys, I just want to take a second to thank all my patrons here who have donated to me. No matter how much they've donated to me, it really means a lot to me. And if you guys want, you can check out my Patreon and help support me continue to make yaoi videos. Thanks guys. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Chess of Blades. In the last episode, we realized that little bitch is still alive. <laughs> or, she's not kidnapped. I mean, yeah, she's not kidnapped. That's what's surprising. I don't... I guess it never happened in this route. She never got kidnapped, I guess. I think. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a bit lost on that, but let's just, let's just continue. Oh, hello, Hazel. What mischief are you trying to get yourself into today? That's not very nice. I just saw you come over here and wanted to give you back something you dropped. Her lips curl in a hurt pout, shoulders drooping slightly. Ah, that was rather unnecessary of me then. Sorry about that. Here, how about you take my pastry? As if I'd flip some magical switch, Hazel immediately brightens up, all but bouncing on her toes while giving me an eager nod. I hand her over the fluffy ice strudel I was originally very excited to eat before that fit of brooding ruined my appetite. Hazel at least looks like she'll enjoy it much more than I will. She starts happily munching away a bit of icing getting on her cheeks. What about this thing I dropped though? I don't remember having anything in my pockets. Oh right, here you go sir. I saw someone put it in your pocket while you were walking around, but it fell out. Blinking in surprise, I take the small folded piece of paper Hazel hands over to me, wiping off the crumbs that fell onto it. Someone put a piece of paper into my pocket? Who the hell, little bitch? Why are you leaving out all the important details? <laughs> well, it was a little crowded back by the stairs. Maybe I just thought someone bumped into me. Are you not going to question her, who? <laughs> I unfold it curiously, scanning over the contents. Meet me tonight, alone, the storage room with the king's portrait. I have a warning for you. <clears throat> My heart skips a beat. There's no way. Was that the murderer? Is something wrong, sir? You look a little funny. Watching me with a concerned expression while chewing on the rest of the pastry, Hazel tilts her head curiously. Ah, oh, no, it's nothing. Just a bit of a strange message, that's all. You didn't happen to see the person who put this in my pocket, did you? Hazel! Before Hazel can respond to my... So we haven't even met Emily yet in this route? <laughs> um... Yeah, that's weird. I feel like that happened really early on in this story, but I guess not. <laughs> Before Hazel can respond to my nervous question, a woman suddenly comes hurrying up to the girl's side, bending down next to her with a slight gasp. She's older, she looks older than me, but not quite Silas's age. The lines on her forehead, however, imply a sort of stress and maturity beyond her years. Her forehead looks immaculate. What are you talking about, Rivian? <laughs> I told you not to eat sweets after breakfast. And what are you doing out here in the hall? The woman whose outfit suggests she's a maid chides Hazel softly while brushing off the icing on her cheeks with one thumb. But, Mom! Quickly crumpling the paper in my hand and stuffing it in my pocket, I clear my throat and bow slightly to the mate. I can't believe we didn't ask her who. She literally just said someone and we just rolled with it. That would be my responsibility, miss. She helped me out a great deal by returning something to me, so I gave her a little treat as a reward. I hope it's not too troubling for you. The maid, Hazel's mother, by the sound of it, looks up at me with widening eyes, then glances back to Hazel, who nods happily. Oh, I see. That's very kind of you, sir. Little Hazel gets into trouble more often than not, but I'm glad that she's doing something helpful now and then, too. 
she offers me a relieved smile, although her eyes study my face with another slightly sharper look. Calm down, lady. It's not my fault your little girl thinks I'm her older brother. I'm Emily, and Hazel here is my daughter. I'm very sorry if she's been bothering you at all. It's just exciting for her to be around so many people at once. I must say, it's a little overwhelming for me too. I nod grimly, very much able to sympathize. Yes, there's quite a great deal going on here, in more ways than one. I'm glad Hazel's enjoying things here, at least. Don't you like parties, sir? There's so many pretty outfits and tasty food and lovely music and the festival, too. And murder, I added dryly in my head. Although, even without the murder, I feel like I'd still be more than ready to go home at this point. You're quite right. Speaking of the festival, I think I'll go out and catch some fresh air. Thanks again for your help, Hazel. You're welcome, sir. Make sure it doesn't fall out of your pockets again. Hazel giggles mischievously, entirely unaware of how ominous a message she brought to me. Oh, by the way, do you know where I might find the storage rooms? I, uh, just thought I'd pass by them on my tour of the castle, you know. My clumsy reasoning causes Emily to tilt her head curiously at me, her eyebrows knitting a little. A moment later, though, she offers me a slightly puzzled smile, nodding her head. Yes, sir. They're on the main floor, down the east corridor. You'll find them if you head down the hall a little bit, I'm sure. I inwardly breathe a sigh of relief, giving the maid a grateful nod. One day, I'll figure my way around these social blunderings, although it may not be this day. Enjoy the rest of your morning then, sir. Come, Hazel. Let's go tidy the rooms upstairs. Yes, Mum. Feeling slightly guilty for going out to the festival while poor Hazel stuck inside, I offer the two a wave as we head off in different directions, then trot down to the main level. The note in my pocket is begging me to read it again, just to make sure I didn't mistake any of the words. However, I'm almost certain that it has to be tied to the murder case somehow, which, considering how close to the messages considering how close the messages deliver got to me, is more than a little unsettling. There may just be someone call asking for a booty call, damn. If I can catch Hazel again, maybe I can ask her if she saw who it was. Yeah, I don't know why we couldn't have just asked then. I really don't like that we just sort of, <laughs> we just sort of walked away and just forgot about it. There might be a clue there as to the murderer's identity, but would the actual culprit really dare to approach me if they thought I'd recognize them? It seems like an obvious trap to go to meet whoever delivered the note, and yet, it might be the only way for me to figure out who the orchestrator behind all of this is. I suppose I can put off the decision until this evening. It's going to weigh on me until then, though. Sighing to myself, I step through the castle doors into the outside, heading towards the chattering and energetic crowds surrounding the festival stalls. The weather's undeniably beautiful, and the cheerful atmosphere is enough to brighten even my sour mood. Still, to think that among this crowd, there could be a murderer. Well, I mean, in a big crowd like this... Like, I feel like there's bound to be at least one murderer anyway, you know, not even including the murderer in the castle. <laughs> you know, just the law of big numbers. That's enough to ruin just about everyone, anyone's enjoyment, I think. Ah, how ignorant is bliss. Stopping at a crowded stall, I peer over the customers' heads to glimpse the vendors' wares. Ah, their masks. That's right, I was going to get one for the masquerade ball. He's got quite the selection. Might as well treat myself while I'm here. I wind up buying a rather overpriced, but nonetheless magnificent mask. I doubt I'll be going to another masquerade anytime soon, so I might as well make this one count. Tucking the mask into my coat, I turn around and start wandering towards another stall. <laughs> Suddenly, 
I see a familiar figure approaching me quickly through the crowd. Roguish features, dark hair, a muscular build, a nightstick in his pants, and a beard just like my father. Oh, Daddy, there's no mistaking it. Instantly, I turn around and try to push my way through the throng of people to escape, gritting my teeth together. Damn it, he's not the person I want to see right now. I thought I said not to start running around, kitten. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? You're just going to have to teach this little kid a lesson. <laughs> Ew. A hand swiftly catches my wrist, and before I can try to pull away, Franz tugs me back towards him. You'll kindly remember I'm not under some kind of house arrest. Besides, what are you out here for? So much for trying to figure out who the assassin was. I mutter irritatedly at Franz as he lets out a chuckle, rubbing his free hand along one side of his stubbled face while shaking his head. Calm down, calm down. Let's not go saying words like assassin in crowds. But before you start giving me that hurtful stare, you should know I've been looking around for information, not having a fun day playing at the festival. But now that you're here, and I figured you'd wander out eventually, we can do some exploration together. Ah, uh, our first couple's outing. With a dreamy sigh, Franz starts to lead me through the crowd, his hand slipping down from my arm to thread his long fingers between my own. A sense of defeat sweeps over me, and I follow him somewhat reluctantly. Joyfully, if you ask me. Damn. Rivian, you can't hide how much you want this. What annoys me most, though, is how at ease I feel now that he's back at my side. Oh my god, there. It's not like you can really blame me. He's so tall and he has the build of someone who can easily wield a blade or win in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Well, Franz's physique isn't any of my business, but if he's so insistent on being my de facto bodyguard, it's important that he's not flimsy. I think it's his physique is Where all your doing? business. Are you going to win me a prize at one of the booths? I glance up at him as we stroll along, feeling slightly self-conscious about our conspicuous hand-holding. Why are you holding hands with him? <laughs> Maybe you should stop. <laughs> Even if I protest, I'll probably come up with some ridiculous excuse like, I don't want you running off again. Well, there are worse things to deal with, I suppose. I thought we'd go see the fights. What if our culprit is actually hiding in plain sight, and is blending in as one of the jousters or brawlers? Assassins have to be good fighters, you know. Don't be ridiculous. He'd have to be a madman to try something like that. Now some of these vendors, they're rather shady. Is your head screwed on properly, kitten? What kind of vegetable peddler moonlights as an assassin? Death by rotten produce? <sighs> <laughs> We continue bickering about the murderer's hidden identity as we walk along, our conversation turning into a contest of who could come up with the most ridiculous theory. The atmosphere is probably far too light for the gravity of this situation, especially considering how grave a danger Franz led me into thinking I was in yesterday. But it's difficult to stay on edge while we stroll among the lively festival grounds, trading quips, and for the first time since I arrived in this place, I find myself surprisingly at ease. Franz too seems more relaxed than his usual aggressively lewd self, <laughs> and he almost looks rather innocent as he admires the wealth of exotic goods and fanciful wares on display around us, but I know underneath that, that facade of innocence. There's a big, fat daddy D in his pants. I notice, however, that his gaze frequently flicks about- I'm never saying daddy again in this playthrough. That's the last time. However, his gaze frequently flicks about, keeping a watchful eye on our surroundings. Boy, last Franz, time. I was wondering, have you- Hold on a moment, is that the boy from yesterday? Just as I interrupt our banter to ask Franz a question, my eyes are suddenly drawn to a familiar face in the crowd. Alistair, wasn't that his name? Hmm? Oh, that one. I'm surprised old Glasses still doesn't have him trapped in his room. Who knows what ungodly things he's probably doing to the poor boy. Ew. <laughs> How, wh why do you know about that? What, what, that's really creepy. 
I shoot Franz a flat look at his mockingly sympathetic words before glancing back over to the young man who's slashing by one of the vendors selling savory foods. He meets my gaze a moment later and abruptly bolts upright to stare at me like a startled deer. Oh, he probably thinks I have it out for him because he tangled me up in this whole mess with Linnaeus. Well, I'm not happy about it, but it really wasn't his fault. Let's go talk to him. He might have some important clues, don't you think? It's possible, if you can keep him from scampering away first. Give him a friendly smile and a wave, why don't you? That constant glare of yours doesn't excite everyone as much as it does me, you know. Attempting to follow Franz's advice while ignoring his comment, I awkwardly waggle my fingers at Alistair. He freezes for a moment, gaping at us with a petrified expression, before finally raising a trembling hand to return the gesture. I decide to seize the opportunity and tug Franz over in Alistair's direction, approaching him a little cautiously so that he doesn't notice, so that he doesn't decide to bolt. It's like dealing with a feral cat or something, I swear. When I, we get closer, I see that he's holding some half-eaten delicacy on a stick, nervously chewing what's probably some of the other half. Franz and I come to a halt a little distance away from him, and a few moments of awkward silence stretch between us. Then, clearing my throat, I attempt to fill the uncomfortable pause with the most cheerful voice I can muster, which is also, which is to say, not very. Well, enjoying the festival, hmm? Good thing you aren't still caught up in all that awful business from last night, eh? He winces a little when I bring up yesterday's incident. Ugh, I probably should have waited to mention that until later. Another sublime display of socialization, Rivian. Y yes sir T truth be told, I'm here to uh, avoid someone. Alistair swallows, his eyes dropping down to his feet. Avoid someone? Is Sir Four Eyes stalking you or something? Franz's tone sounds somewhat more direct than I was expecting, as if he's impatient with Alistair's tentative way of speaking. Wasn't he the one who told me to be more friendly? Uh, uh no. It's my g g guardian She's going to be in a v very bad mood today, I think. He anxiously fiddles with the street food he's holding, looking rather unhappy. I have to say, if his meek way of speech wasn't so annoying, he'd almost be cute in a mousy sort of way. I see, I see. That's quite a shame. Well, we won't bother you too long. But I wanted to ask you a little more about last night, if you don't mind. Trying to work my way rather unsettily back to the main point, I offer him an encouraging nod in an attempt to sound a little less aggressive. He shifts a bit uneasily, but doesn't seem as completely closed off as when I first brought it up, so I decide to take the plunge. About who you saw going into the gardens? Besides me, obviously. Was there anyone else? People who seemed suspicious or out of the ordinary? As I watch him intently, Alistair visibly hesitates, averting his gaze for a moment. Is he hiding something? Or is it just his normal anxious attitude? I can't tell, damn it. Well, Rivian asked you a question, didn't he? Did you see someone suspicious or didn't you? Or, oh, surely you're not protecting someone. Well, damn, he's going to scare the boy off. N n no, it's not like that, I swear, s sir. I r really c can't say anything. You have to believe me. Franz's accusation makes Alistair suddenly tense up, the stick of food dropping from his hand as he takes a hasty step backwards. Grinding my teeth quietly, I elbow Franz on the side, letting out a pointed cough. No, no, we're not trying to accuse you of anything. Really, can't we just have a little chat about... It w wasn't her. There's no way. S sorry, gotta go. Before I can so much as get another word out, the wide-eyed Alistair turns on his heel and dashes into the crowd at top speed. I stare in disbelief at his diminishing figure until it disappears into the throng of people. Damn, he's surprisingly fast for someone so small. 
So was that really necessary? If you had been any more direct with him, he probably would have soiled himself on the spot. Turning up to glare at Franz, I fold my arms over my chest, expecting a sheepish reaction. But instead, he smirks slyly back at me, lifting his shoulders in an innocent shrug. Really? I thought it was quite effective. After all, he was so flustered that he practically blurted out who he was trying to protect. Uh, her, is it? Hmm, I suppose so. If you hadn't scared him off, we might have gotten a name. The fact that it's a girl doesn't narrow it down a whole lot, does it? Franz doesn't appear the slightest bit remorseful, or even mildly apologetic, so I decide to save my breath, chastising him and just shake my head. I think not everything here is what it seems to be, Kitten. Let's not forget that we're all playing parts in a much larger game. And sometimes, if you don't attack your opponent while you can, you never get the chance to again. Rather than elaborating on his statement, he instead reaches out a finger towards my neck. Tracing the tip horizontally along my throat, the gesture slow enough to be as much dangerous as it is suggestive. Now why is he exciting me out in public? Right now, your position's better than you think it is. After all, our enemy believes you have a clue as to who they are. We just have to use that to our advantage. <sighs> the fact that Franz refers to all of this so casually as a game is more unsettling than it is reassuring. Sure, I love a good one-on-one -on -one every now and then, but not when the when the, not when the stakes are my life. Is this truly what being in court is like? He acts as if it's a normal occurrence. Well, I sure up in the mood, didn't I? Don't look so pale. I like you better when you're blushing. Come on, let's continue over to the games. Fine, fine. Still feeling slightly sobered, I follow Franz back out into the main crowd, which seems even larger now that it's around midday. Our back and forth chatter is a little less lively, mostly on my end, as we make our way back towards the sandy floored arena that's encircled by a thick throng of people. Judging from the loud cheers, some kind of fight is going on currently. I've always found combat sports to be a little barbaric and rather hypocritical for nobles so enthralled with the genteel manners. Maybe it's an outlet for their human aggression. As Franz and I push our way to the side of the ring, my eyes fall on two men taking wide punches at each other in a sort of hand-to-hand -hand brawl. Who's that fiery head one? He's positively giant. Him? He's one of the king's favorites, I think. Doesn't take much to see why. He's built like a brick house. Franz podges, casting me a somewhat sharp glance from the corner of his eye. I hope you're not getting any funny thoughts. He's twice your size, you know. He'd impale you from one end to the other. How about you just shut up? My head isn't constantly filled with vulgarity and like someone I know. And just so you know, I was able to take both him and his friend <laughs> at the same time, so I'm not as weak as I look. <laughs> oh god, that uh, I can I still can't believe that happened. <laughs> still can't believe we got devil penetrated. <laughs> that was crazy. Chuckling smugly, Franz ruffles a hand through my hair, destroying the work I spent on my neatly and painstakingly groomed locks. Oh my god, what a woman. I purse my lips together and bear the indignity of it, deciding to focus on the two men beating each other up instead. Do you really believe any of these brawlers could be our assassin? They seem a little too much on the burly side to not be noticed. I think you're right. That boy would have probably called out one of them as the culprit if he'd seen them going into the gardens. That's a more obvious murderer than one with biceps the size of watermelons. Well, he thought I was a suspect. So you should take his observations with a grain of salt, you know. You're plenty suspicious. I'm sure a lot of people interpret your awkwardness as trying to hide something. <clears throat> uh, 
A sour expression overtakes my face, but it's difficult to argue with Franz's point. Well, it's not my fault that I'm used to talking to so many people. Is a bit of social fumbling all it takes to be thought of as shady? Father hates being around crowds as much as I do. Maybe he's just so brutally direct that it comes off as straightforwardness rather than acting suspicious. Nah, I'm not desperate enough to take a page out of his book yet. Maybe I'll hire a I hire an etiquette tutor when I get back home. I fall into my musings and practically zone out for the rest of the fight, which continues on for a little while longer. Only when the ginger-haired man squarely knocks out his opponent does the crowd erupt into cheers, and he victoriously strides out of the ring with his hands raised. I could have seen that one coming. Let's ask him if he might know of anyone suspicious. Hmm? Oh, so watermelon aunt. Why not, I suppose? We step our way through the throng of people, which steadily grows thinner now that there's a break between fights. The tall brawler is getting the blood wiped off his cheeks by a clearly flustered young woman who's probably more than a little intimidated by how his hands are the size of her head. Big ol' yaoi hands. Yum. <laughs> He turns to us, however, when we approach eyeing Franz for a long few moments before his gaze flicks down to me dubiously. There's something you lads be needing. I don't take kindly to just being gorped at. I forgot how Scottish. Was it Irish? I've already forgotten again. Either way, I forgot how Scottish his accent is. <laughs> his fake accent. His thickly accented voice bellows out, deep and loud enough that it seems like it could potentially shake the ground if he was shout- Oh, it can. Holy shit, it can shake the ground if he's shouting. Holy shit. Fucking burns my eardrums, breaks my eardrums, pierces my eardrums. I swallow my nervousness and attempt to come up with some sort of placating remark, but before I get the chance, Franz suddenly clears his throat. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary around the castle by chance? We're looking into a little mishap that occurred recently. I shoot him a sidelong glance. He'd better not mess things up again like he did with Alistair. I have a feeling the results would be a lot worse with this brute too. And getting smashed into Rivian, a Rivian shaped, shaped bloodstain on the ground isn't on my list of plans for today. Ooh, of the ordinary. I have no clue what you damn nobles thinks ordinary. But... He pauses, scratching ponderously at his cheek, a body grin rising to his lips soon after. Yeah, knew that you're mentioning it. I do remember seeing one in the maid scurrying around all anxious like inside the castle last evening. When I was paying a visit to her. <laughs> Admire it. I didn't think much of it due to being distracted, but I remember the lass had a pretty face. Ooh. With big brune eyes and darkish hair on their shoulders. Look plenty nervous, though. Franz's eyebrows knit together at the man's description, and he flicks his gaze thoughtfully to one side. His big brown eyes and dark hair around her shoulders. Doesn't that sound like Hazel's mother? She was on the floor with the guest rooms then. Did you see if she was carrying anything? Well, I weren't staring at her aunts, but I reckon she had some sort of large cloth bundle. Something valuable, most likely. Yet yeah, she seemed awfully shaky for just that. The brawler raises his mountain-like shoulders in a shrug. He seems to be watching us a bit curiously, or maybe suspiciously. Perhaps we shouldn't attract any more undue attention by asking people such forthright questions. After all, we don't know who might be working against us. I see. Well, you've been very helpful, sir. Congratulations on your victory. Brisk but cordial, Franz offers a nod of thanks to which the large fighter lets out a snort. You're speaking as if it were an even match. Bah. Can't expect you lot to know about real fighting anyways. He mutters to himself in an irritated tone and turns away from us shaking his head disparagingly. 
Franz, however, seems to have already moved on, and he beckons for me to follow him back into the crowd. I glance between him and the dismissive brawler's back, debating on whether it's worth trying to pry any more answers out of him, but I have a feeling we've outstayed our welcome, and Franz looks a little impatient. Sighing in return, I return to Franz's side, mulling over this new clue. A nervous feeling curls in the pit of my stomach when I compare the fighter's description of the maid to the woman I met earlier. Excuse me. A tall guard irritatedly elbows his way past us, and I realize with some embarrassment that we're standing in the middle of a busy path. I grab Franz's wrist and tug him a little bit out of the way, offering an apologetic nod to the guard as he shuffles past. What do you think about all this, then, Franz? When an immediate reply doesn't come, I inquisitively glance over to the tall man who seems to be lost in thought. His eyes are focused in the distance, towards the same direction that anno the annoyed guard stalked off in. I nudge his side impatiently, and he blinks for a moment before directing his emerald gaze down at me. Ah, kitten. As much as it pains me, I believe I'll need to leave your side for a little while. Can you stay out of trouble until I'm back? You hold my hand all day, but you don't even... You don't even give me a kiss before saying goodbye? Fine. Whatever you wish. I suppose I'll see you when I see you. His response surprises me a little, so my words come out sounding somewhat surly. Franz pauses, lips curling in a devilish smirk. Has parting become a sweet sorrow? You don't seem as keen on getting rid of me this time. You're just my bodyguard, you know. Don't go getting a swell head. <laughs> swell head? Now, now I'm just making myself think of things. <laughs> my flustered reply elicits a chuckle from Franz, who lowers himself in a bow. A moment later, he slips off into the crowd and I lose sight of his broad back in the sea of people. Where is he going off to suddenly, anyway? He seemed fairly distracted. Did some kind of idea pop into his head? <sighs> Feeling a little disheartened, I slowly make my way back to the castle, shoving my hands moodily into my pockets. The afternoon sun beats down on me heavily helping to sap away my previous energy and enthusiasm. It's hard to shake a sense of frustration from having all of these pieces that don't fit together, too. And I have no idea who my opponent is, even though I sense some of the moves they're making. No, more importantly, do I even have an opponent? I've only been going off with Franz's word that I'm being targeted. Maybe I'm just deluding myself into a sense of danger when there's nothing really there. But there is that note that Hazel gave me earlier. I forgot to ask Franz what he thought about it, but perhaps it's better I didn't. It's better if I die in that storage room no one even knows about it. <laughs> Idiot. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to end this episode of Chess of Blades here. Um, seems like Rivian might die in the, in the next episode because he told no one about the storage room thing. But, um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.